This is a 2024 Tesla Model Y and in this video I'm going to look at the sentry mode and the dash cam features which modern Teslas have because Teslas have cameras. They've got them up there on the B pillar, they've got them down there on the wing, obviously at the front and the rear as well and they're recording everything all the time and these have features which other cars just don't have. So this will help any new buyers of a Tesla understand what they do. So Teslas have these two features called uh, sentry mode and dash cam. Dash cam is quite obvious, it's acting like a dash cam. It's recording the footage while you drive all the time and then you can mark something as important and it won't get overwritten. And then you can use that for uh, maybe to help you with an insurance claim or something like that. And it's using all the cameras outside as well. So it's better than just having a front facing dash cam up on the windscreen. And then sentry mode is effectively CCTV. So while your car is parked up, you can decide whether you want sentry mode on. And again, it's using all those cameras around the car to record any footage. So if someone gets close to your car, it will capture those images. And all of this information is stored on a USB drive, which is in your glove box. And that is why Tesla's no longer have a button to open your glove box because the glove box has to be secure now because that's where your security uh, footage is saved. So what you have to do is push the glove box button up here on the screen to open the glove box. But as you can see, I've got a pin on mine and that's an additional security feature which you can set up in a Tesla. So it has a pin code to open that glove box. And then in that glove box in the corner is a USB port where you can plug in either a USB stick or a USB drive. But you do get a Tesla USB stick with the car, uh, but it's very awkward to get to. So I'll just go around the passenger side and we can have a better look at that. So yeah, these glove boxes are obviously um, covered in black fabric and it's very dark in there but over in this left corner at the top is the usb stick and that is it there little tesla branded usb stick which you get with the cars but a lot of people swap this out for an ssd drive if they want more uh, storage um, but i haven't found it's uh, been needed yet this works perfectly adequately the only thing is it is very difficult to find that USB port to plug it back in. It really is in an awkward location. So let's just have a look at the dash cam to start with. So the vehicle is recording all the time and it's constantly overwriting itself if that USB drive gets uh, full. And you have a function here called a dash cam and this is going to show you uh, a live feed out of all the cameras. So we've got the front camera here um, and then the rear and the side cameras. But we can go up here and have a look at uh, past entries. And um, I've got a load of recent entries up here. So let's just have a look at one here. Um, and actually that's me towing a trailer. But as we can see here, the quality of the footage isn't brilliant it's a bit of a grainy image and the colors are pretty poor as well so you're certainly going to get a better quality image if you have your own dash cam mounted up there on the screen but it does a good enough job for what you need i think but the advantage over a dash cam is you've got all these extra camera feeds so here we're looking out the front but at the same time i can see what was happening at the rear and I can see what is happening at the left and at the right. But as we can see here, the image quality when the car isn't moving is actually very good. It's just when it is moving, it really struggles. Um, but anyway, it's good enough for what it needs to do. And I certainly wouldn't be fitting a dash cam in a Tesla. So the settings for the dash cam is under safety. And then you've got it here, dash cam, and you can turn it off, have it on manual or auto. I have it on auto, or you can have it on honk. And then if you need to push the horn at any point, that's when it records. Personally, I think auto is the best option. And then what I've done is I've dragged down a shortcut for the dash cam here. 
So it's always at the bottom of the screen. At any point I can tap that and it's going to save the current footage. And that's the better way, I think, of having it working in the car. So while you're driving, if there's something that you want to record, you just hit that and then that image or that bit of video footage isn't going to get overwritten and it gets saved up here on your USB stick. So I've got some footage here that I'd saved while I was driving in Oxford and when you push the little uh, button down here to save the current footage it saves a 10 minute block and it puts a little red dot there at the point where you push the button. So it basically saves the previous 10 minutes and that doesn't get overwritten and it remains on your USB stick. So I've got some footage here and if I just whiz through this, this is me driving in Oxford and get up to that point up here. Let's just get it a little bit closer, it's a little bit difficult. But I was driving in Oxford here and I saw some teenagers, well I guess they were teenagers, on a scooter and there's two of them there on a scooter which uh, obviously shouldn't be two people on one scooter. I think these are these hired scooters in Oxford but they were going along on the inside of some cars and this silver Peugeot here turns into a junction and hits them and it did actually hit them. They brushed the headlight of the car as they went past. They were so lucky they didn't get knocked off. Um, but yeah, that's a good example of where you might be driving along, you want to save some footage or you've seen something, you can just quickly push that button there and then you get 10 minutes of footage that gets permanently saved to your USB stick. So if you want to see any footage on your USB stick, the vehicle must be in park and then you can just push the icon down there or go to it via the menu and then you can push the menu button at the top there and then go to dash cam and then you can see all your saved clips down here and it's got a date and a time and also the location as well. Or you can remove the USB stick and take it inside and plug it into your computer and uh, you get a different uh, file for every video stream. So whether that's a view out the front or the rear or the left or the right, they're all separate files. You don't get this all in one view like you do from the video player in the car. So next, let's talk about Sentry Mode. Sentry Mode is basically a security CCTV system. So you can set it up so it records all the time your vehicle is parked. And hopefully then if someone damages your vehicle or crashes into it or attempts to break into it, you've got them on camera. So that is all under safety again and there we've got sentry mode and you can push the information button to find out more about it and you can turn it on and off. You've also got shortcuts here to exclude certain places. So you can, you can exclude your home, workplace or favourites as long as they're in the navigation and that's a good idea because you probably don't want this running all the time because it does use an awful lot of energy and therefore will reduce your range if your car is parked up for a long time and this is left running. You can also choose how long the video clips need to be. In my case, I've just kept it to one minute, that's long enough. And uh, I've got camera-based detection running. So what that is doing is it's watching the camera feeds and it records every time there's motion near the car. And generally, I think you're gonna want that on because otherwise it will only record footage if the alarm goes off and usually that's then too late but it's this camera based detection system which does consume a lot more power so to access the footage it is exactly the same way as you do for the dash cam you go to the dash cam player you can then go up to the menu and you can select sentry and then it will filter just the sentry items here and we can have a look at some past footage. So this is when I was parked in an Ikea car park. And just like before, it puts a little red spot at the point of interest where it detected motion and uh, therefore saved this clip. Uh, so if I scroll forward to the point where it detected some motion, and as you can see, it was ignoring the cars previously. And it's actually me and my daughter walking up to the car 
uh, and this is the point that it started recording or saving it because we were standing right next to the car so it's ignoring us as we we're walking up to it but as we got to the car and touched the car it then saved it and of course you've got that previous one minute that you can go back on where this system works particularly well when you've got camera based detection enabled is when you've parked your car up in a public place and let's say you've come back to the car and there's a scratch in the car or a dent in the side or something you can then look back at all the places where people were near your car so in this case we've got a car parked next to mine and we can see a door was opened in this case there's loads of space um, so she didn't hit my car but if that door had hit the car and caused the dent you can then jump to the rear camera and possibly catch them as the car was pulling away or the front camera or whatever and see their number plate. However, there are some times where you see things you really didn't want to see. <laughs> I wish I never saw that. So let's just give you an example of it running at night time. So we've got an example here of uh, the car being parked up during the late evening when it's dark. And oh yeah, this is just us returning to the car and my daughter unlocking the boot there and me carrying the shopping. So yeah, that's the footage out the front, left and right during the dark. So yeah, works very well. This system isn't 100% reliable though. Um, it's not foolproof. Uh, as an example, the other day I passed a lorry that had um, come off the road. It had hit the bank and fallen on its side, a big HGV. And it was quite an impressive sight. So I hit the button down there to record the footage. And a few days later, I went to Sentry Mode to call it up and have another look. And it wasn't there. Uh, and I've seen other people say the same on the Facebook groups. Sometimes it doesn't capture the footage that you um, that it should have done and you think that when you've pushed this it should have saved it uh, maybe it's because I hadn't pushed the button properly uh, because obviously with touchscreens you've got to be pretty accurate and while you're driving you might be sort of pushing down here or pushing the heater um, maybe that's the fault but anyway I found a couple of times now um, the footage that I was expecting to see hasn't existed on the USB drive. Another really cool feature of this system now from a recent uh, software update is that you can now look at the camera feeds through your phone app remotely. So let's just turn on sentry mode and there's a shortcut to it under controls. So that's now turned on and in the app now we can see that live camera has been enabled in the app but it doesn't work if someone sat in the car and the car's not locked. So let's get out and lock the car. So in the app here, I can look at the live camera feeds and I've got a dot there for all the cameras around the car. It's gonna bring up all the live feeds there. So for example, I could push the front camera only and I'm gonna get the live feed from the front camera. I can also honk the horn, flash the lights, make the car fart or I can also push and hold that button and talk through the uh, outdoor speaker behind the front bumper and uh, hopefully uh, persuade any potential thief to do a runner. And there's also now a camera inside the Tesla so I can hit the internal camera there and I can see what's going on inside the car as well. And that internal camera is up here just above the rear view mirror. And when sentry mode is active, there is a full screen notification there. So anyone outside the car knows that they're being recorded. So I hope you found that video useful. If you have, please do click the thumbs up. That really does help. Do ask any questions in the comments below. Uh, do subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to know more about the Tesla Model Y, I'll put a link in the video description below to a playlist where you can see other videos I've made. But there's plenty more coming soon as well. Okie doke, I'll see you on the next one.